thank you for joining our session. We are Ruben and Hank, and we came all the way from the Netherlands. Yeah, I hear some people from the Netherlands, great. Uh, <laughs> thank you for joining. Yes, and we came all the way from the Netherlands to create a delicious data cocktail for you. So, yeah, this is our first time in Vegas, both Ruben and I, and um, I, have a, I really enjoy it, but I have a problem. The Netherlands is so small and tiny, and this is so overwhelming, I am lost the whole time. I don't know where to go. Every time I want to visit something in Vegas, I don't know where to go, to the left or to the right. And in the end, I end up in the casino. <laughs> Looking to the world of data, same can happen to you. You don't know what to do. Blend, or should I join? I don't know. So, thank you for joining, because we will uncover in this session all the secrets about blending, joining, and even a little bit more. We have some nice surprises for you. All right, but before we dive into the deep, let's talk about Ruben. He's my colleague now for over a year in our office in the Netherlands. We sit together in Amsterdam, and um, I'm really impressed by everything he knows about Tableau. He has been working with the Tableau software for over five years now. He started at an implementation company, but I'm so glad he's now part of our Benelux team. So thank you, Ruben, for doing this session together. But can you tell me a little bit more about yourself? I mean, of course I can. Um, so hi everyone, my name is Ruben. Um, I think as most people, I love to travel. And as it's here my first time in Vegas, I was absolutely loving it. Um, and I'm also a motorcyclist, so what are you gonna do if you're in Nevada? You're gonna run a Harley and go out into the desert. It was absolutely great. Um, and the last thing, as is tradition with Tapla, what is an introduction without a cat picture? <laughs> so <clears throat> apart from that, um, let me introduce you a little bit about Hank. Um, we've been working with him for the last year. He's been sort of mentoring me when I joined Tableau. He's very knowledgeable. And um, can you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Hank, except that you really want to show off your daughters here? Of course. Always start with the best. <laughs> In this case, my lovely daughters, Edoni and Anne. Yeah, we really like to travel together with the family. And for instance, here we are in front of the beautiful wall the beautiful John Lennon wall in Prague. And this wall is all about Tableau. Yes, this wall is self-service. You, yeah. <laughs> you can create your own painting on this wall. And look at these colors. These are so bright. It's a beautiful blend of colors. But, but, but Hank, before you get carried away with your blending, let me just join in and try to explain to these people why we're actually here. Why do you want to blend, join, thank you for that. Why do you want to blend, join, and integrate data? It's most of the time it's because you have some questions and you want to do some analysis, but your data is not perfect. It's not in one system. Uh, you would like it to be, but most of the times it isn't. So you might have sales and marketing data on one hand, you might have some controlling data in another, and well, let's be realistic, most of us have an Excel file that they want to combine the data with as well. So we're gonna talk about different techniques of doing that today. Um, so if we look at our agenda, we're just first gonna cover the basics and then we're gonna deep, go deeper and deeper every single time. Um, and when we talk about these things, you're blending and joins, I've encountered a lot of times, there's like two different teams. There's one team that really loves to blend everything and that's like their tool to use for everything. And there's another team, joins that just likes to use joints for everything, because that's the industry standard and it's actually the better way. So, as you can kind of see, I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious which team I am. Um, so, can I get just a little cheer for team joints? Who, who's in my team? Can I get a team joints? Right. Uh, I think I've won already, yeah. so, uh, and then there's- oh, I'm not sure you won that one. Can I have a little bit of noise for team blend? Thank you, thank you. I think this was 50-50. <laughs> All right, so, okay. 
Um, I'm from the Netherlands, and yeah, I love the U.S. It's such a great country. I love you people. I love to visit the U.S. But yeah, the Netherlands is small, and this country is so big. And I'm not even from Amsterdam. I'm from a little tiny town. So every time I visit the U.S., I'm a little bit nervous. And I ask myself, how safe is it here? How safe is the state I'm in now? I really would like something to have something like this. So, a map. And I went to the internet and I found a very interesting file with robbery and burglary information. An Excel file with offense information, the most recent, recent offense information. And to go more into detail, here you have state codes, crime, robbery or burglary, and crime counts. But because I'm not from here, I really don't know all the names of all your state codes. So I need something extra. So I went back to the internet and I found this. A beautiful CSV having state code and state name. And now this is the first moment to combine this data. So let's blend. So. Here we have the two files, and I will start with the US offenses. I just drag this into Tableau, and here we see the content. We have state code, we have crime, and we have crime count. Perfect. So let's start the first analysis. So I am in the US at this moment, and these are my states, and I really would like to see the crime count on color. So. Great, this is it. But because I really would like to have the names, let's blend. And to blend, I only have to press this little tiny button to create an extra data source. In this case, it's not an Excel, it's a CSV, but it could also be a, a database, an Oracle database, SQL Server, or uh, whatever. Does not matter. In this case, it's a text file. So. What you see here, state code and state name. Perfect, this is exactly what I need. So going back to my sheet, what I see now, what happened here on the left, I see two data sources. So this is my new data source, states, and we see a, a little blue check mark uh, at the US crimes. So this means it's my primary data source. And I see also this icon, and this is the linking icon. This means the data is already linked on state code. This is exactly what I want, so I'm ready now to drag the state name onto label. And so for me, I know all the state names now and the crimes. So California is quite dark. And any people from California? Oh yeah, ooh, oh, that's a lot. It's very unsafe in California. <laughs> but is this fair? Not really. I heard there are a lot of people living in California. So, gladly, I have this measure. It's also from the state data source. And let's just put the population on label so I can see the number of citizen per state, and yes, this is quite a lot, more than 39 million in California, and for instance, North Dakota, it's a li little less. So to have real fair colors, I of course need to create a ratio. So let do, let's do this. So I'm gonna just create a ratio, that's crimes divided by population. So now the colors will change, and this map is different. So California, is, it's really safe there. That's good. Perfect. All right. So what did we do? Let's take a look under the hood. 
With blending, I am combining primary and secondary data sources. The primary data source is the crimes. That's the most important, the data you don't want to lose. And then I appended columns. That's the only thing you are doing. You just append columns. Nothing more, nothing less. You never, ever will lose any records. You will never, ever duplicate records. You just append columns. That's it. Very important is that you decide for the right data source to be the primary data source. In most cases, this will be your transactions, the data you don't want to lose. So how do we define what your primary data source is? It's very simple. I started my demo by dragging country and state code. And by doing this, I decided this is my primary data source. This was the data source I started with. And automatically, this is your primary data source. And by doing this, I had my um, crime information and I added, I blended the state information, having names and population. And this is automatically my secondary data source. And now I was able to combine this together with crime count and population, all linked together on state codes. And this is it, very simple. But the world is not perfect. The world is not superstar. That there that, that can be uh, a lot of things happening with your data. For instance, you are missing data. For instance, you are missing state information. What will happen? Um, you will still keep your primary data source. Nothing will, um, nothing will get lost, but you can only blend the information available. For instance, if you look to this example, what you see, New York is missing in the state file. No problem, we will, stay, we will still have our crime count, but we can't calculate our ratio because we don't have the population. But you will not lose anything. Hey, but Hank, we yeah. also not lose any records if you swap them. What happens then? Yes, Ruben, if you swap them, you have a problem. Yeah, because if you swap them, you will lose secondary records. So it's very important that you define the right primary data source. So, to give you an example, imagine you will start with the states, and then you add crime information. In that case, you will lose the crime information for New York, because the primary is your driver, the primary is your base, and you will lose records from the secondary. All right, let's talk about this linking. This was all done automatically. Why? Because in both the data sources, there was a column with the same name, state code, in this example. So it was automatically linked. Sometimes you will get this icon. This is the broken link icon. And what does this mean? This means that your linking field is in the data sources, but is not in your vis. For instance, if you look to uh, the left, you see crime and crime count, but the linking field state code is not in the vis. It's in the data, but not in the vis. So if you want to do, do a population calculation, for instance, you want to have the summary of all the states to create your ratio, you, you have to link it. It's very simple, just click on this icon and you're done. Sometimes you will not get an icon at all. What's happening then? The reason is that the linking fields don't have the same name. For instance, here you have state code and you have state. No problem, we can solve this. For this, we have the relationship dialog. So let's take a quick look to this. All right, so let's first switch. So the same map, but now I am blending with another state file. I just drag and drop this. It's, a, it's another way to blend. So what you see here, we have a state 
and state name. It's not state code. So let's blend this one. And what you see now, here on the left, there is no icon at all. So for this, just go to your data menu, edit relationships. and go to custom. And with a custom relationship, you can decide how to link. In this case, we have state code on the left, and we have state on the right, and this is it. Okay, and I'm done. Here we see the right linking icon, and I'm now able to put this on label. And that's it. So, what's happening under the hood when you do this all? By dragging this crimes file, I created a connection. This is a connection, in this case, to an Excel, but it could also be a database. And a database is having tables. In Excel, it's sheets. And this is the source of my information. And automatically, a Tableau data source is created. With blending, I create a new data source, pointing to a connection, in this case, a CSV, having a table. And with blending, you create a vis on top of two data sources. And it's all beautiful combined in a sheet. So, in a sheet, Hank? Y yes, uh, Ruben, it's all beautiful combined in a sheet. So every time I create a new sheet, I have to do this again? Exactly. That's what I call maximum flexibility. You call that flexibility, I call it inefficient. Um, so let me walk these people to how you would do that with a join, because you can basically take the same example and execute it in a join. So as we talked about, we have this same data. We have the offenses and we have the population. And what the difference is with join is that you're actually going to combine it on the row level. So you're going to the most granular level of your data, and that's where you're going to combine it. And you get the result set like here. So let me show you how that is done. I'm sure I have the right one here. There we go. All right. So I have here the same data that Hank just used with the US crimes. Um, and let me now show you how to join this. So to do that, I'm going to actually go to my data source here at the top bottom left. Um, and when I enter that, I'm just going to create a new connection right here at the top. So I'm not going to create a new data source. I'm going to create a new connection. I'm going to connect to my text file. And this is the exact same file that Hank just used as well. And as you can see, because the state codes have the same name, it connects it automatically. And you see here the table I just showed you a small preview of. Um, and we should have all the data now. And we're ready to enhance our viz. So we have here the crime counts. And I can very easily take the crime count and divide it by the sum of population just to get that ratio that we're looking for. And well, the colors look good. And to help Hank a bit, because he doesn't know the state codes, let me drag in the state names to the label. Um, very nicely, you got California, Nevada, everything in there. So, uh, very, very nice, uh, Ruben. Should we begin? Yeah, 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 yeah. The colors look uh, uh, great, but uh, I really would like to have the population also on this map. Can you show it? Because yeah, sure. that's what I did also with the blending demo. So it's very simple. I mean, fairly easy, right? There's like 79 million people yeah, in California. You, that's a lot. <laughs> that's another number I, than I had. I think I know what happened. It's because okay. it goes on the most okay. granular level, we've probably got some duplication of rows. But it's, easy. it's an easy fix. I mean, these people are, uh, I've been here for a few days, so they must be familiar with it. So I'm just going to create a new cal calculation. I'm just going to call it new population. I'm just going to use an LOD in this case. Just mainly make sure I put that on the state code. I'm just going to take the max of my population here. All right, now I'm going to do my fancy, fancy replace references here to just make sure I use the right one everywhere. And I, there we go. 39 and a half million people in California. Anybody can do that. It's reusable. Oh, yes, of course. Any, anyone can do an LOD. Yeah. Absolutely. You're so quick, man. Great job. <laughs> so let me explain to you what just happened here. All right. So as we saw this example, what you could actually see is that I had less rows of population than I had in offenses, because we actually have two different crimes in our little data set. There's data for burglary, and there's data for robbery. So when this actually all boils down, you can actually see that in the population column, you get duplication of rows here. And because that happens, you get that one of them weighs slightly heavier than the other, and then you get this duplication, and we want to fix that. 
So in this case, I fixed it with the LED you just saw in here. Uh, there are many different ways to fix this. You might have seen a few, you might know a few. Um, and, you know, it works. And the good thing is, because I used to replace references, I can hide the original field. And when I publish this data source to my users, they don't actually have to know this. So it's still a reusable object, which is kind of nice. And that shows the core difference here between blending and joining. So when you have a blend, you're always looking at the aggregation of data. You link on first, you aggregate the data, and only then you link it. Where in a join, you have your most raw data, you first link it, and then you do the query. Uh, and that causes these differences uh, and different use cases where they're practical for as well. But joining has got a few perks over blending. Because where blending is basically always a left join, and I'll just later explain that to you. With joining, we have different join types, and we can use quite a few of them. And just to walk you through them, so we have a left join. What that means is that my data on my left-hand side takes priority in this case. And it's good to realize that on the left-hand side, we have New York, and on the right-hand side, we have Washington here. And in this case, because Washington only exists on the right-hand side, it actually doesn't end up in our result set. There, it's not there, and the state name and population for New York are also not there because we cannot link that information, but New York will be there in the result set. And where, with blending, you only have your primary data source that actually decides this, I can do a right join. I can just switch it. So now Washington takes priority over New York. Washington will be in my result set, and New York will not be. So that's quite flexible. But I can even do an inner join. I can just have the data that exists on both sides of it. Um, in that case, I only have Florida and Nevada. And for the people that really want to look at all the data, you've guessed it. Um, you can do a full outer join, and then all the data will be there, and everything that cannot be linked will be filled up with nulls. But there's more. You have even more possibilities and more flexibility, flexibility with joining. Because in blending, you basically only have the option to link the fields on where they are exactly the same. With joining, you can actually have when you equal then, or when it is not equal, or is larger than, smaller than, you have all these different options. And you can even make join calculations, and with these join calculations, you can even do a spatial join. So you can even basically match your data on a geometric point and see how that matches in a certain shape file. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. If you ever need it, you will think like, now I know. So much more flexibility. And if we look at how that technically works in Tableau, well, with a join, you always have just one data source. This one data source might have more than one uh, connections. And as you see here, there are three different connections. And they all go back up to one data source, and then we have the viz. And you might think, data source connection table, where does that all list? So we've got this nice little helper slide here. The data source is basically the name at the top in your data source pane. The connections are on the top left-hand side. Those are the color-coded ones. And you see the color matches the ones uh, in the pane with the pills of all the tables. So you can always find this, and you can even mix and match uh, them as well. So you love analogies, Hank. So yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have anything to explain now. This is it. <laughs> so with a kitchen knife, you can do a lot. You can put peanut butter on your sandwich. You can open the mail <laughs> a lot. <laughs> OK, with the Swiss Army knife, you can do more. You're more flexible. You heard about Ruben telling about all the special joints. That's great, of course. But watch out. You can harm yourself. <laughs> Not with a kitchen knife. But Hank, wouldn't it be great if we, there would be an option like the best of both worlds a little bit? The best of us, of oh. course. <laughs> best, of, best of Tableau, I'm not here to, to okay. talk about us. Um, I, I guess, who's been here on DevSon stage? Who's seen this? All right, well, not that many. I actually have a new demo, that's good. All right, so um, what we introduced there is a new data model capabilities. And what basically means you can now join the data, but the join is only done when you query the data. So I have a pre-built model here with has this new data modeling capabilities. And let me just show you what happens if I do the exact same thing. So I'm going to walk through the exact same demo for joining that I just did. And you'll see what different results I'm going to get. 
So I'm going to connect to an Excel file, same events file I used earlier. And as you can see here, the blob is right here at the top. So I'm going to add a new connection to my text file with my states. I'm just going to make sure I drag the table in here. And I just ensure that the link is very nicely on state code. That's all correct. I'm happy with that. So I'll close that up. So let me build this example. Um, we had the countries, we have the state codes, and we have the crime count on the collar. So that works. I can now say I have my sum of crime count divided by my sum of population. And I could put the state name on the label. So now everything's been the same. But the good thing is now I can actually drag my population to my labels as well. And now everything is actually correct. So if you've not seen devs on stage, definitely watch that back. Um, you'll be really happy with this. So the concepts of joining and blending are actually still the same. Just some caveats that we had until now, like the double counting of rows, will actually not exist anymore uh, when you're using the new data model capabilities. Um, so it's really cool. Keep an eye out on that. And I believe that's coming somewhere next year. All right. All right. We're in Vegas. More than 300 weddings per day. So this is the city of Union. <laughs> what about data union, Ruben? Well, it's kind of good that you ask. So union is kind of a different concept. And you probably came here as like, oh, talk about blends and joints, and it's good. But unioning is a slightly different concept, but it is related, because you're still sort of preparing your data for your analysis. But there is a good difference with union and versus blending and joining. So with blending and joining, we added columns. We've seen that. What you're going to do with a union is you're not going to add any columns. You're just going to add any rows. So you're just stacking the data on top of each other. And there's not actually much more to it than that. So just to demonstrate that, let me show you um, back to the normal Tableau. So what you see here is I have two uh, CSV files with the US crimes. So I've split it up. Uh, one has the data for the 20th century, and one file has the data for my 21st century. So if you're in a business, this must look familiar. A lot of businesses have data per month or per year. Um, so it's kind of nice if you could actually combine these data super easily, uh, and you can analyze it in one go. So let me first connect to my uh, 20th century data. As you can see here, there's just data there. There's nothing for the 21st. So I have this little block here, your union. And I can drag that just on top of it, so I'm going to overwrite it. And I'm going to drag in all the tables that I want to union. There's two tables in the union. That's what I want. I'm going to click OK. And if I go to my data preview, I now see I ended up with two columns, one with time and the other one for years. So the columns just didn't really match up. It's kind of easy to fix that, which is really nice. If I just multi-select these two columns, I right-click it, and I can say Merge Mismatch Fit. I will just merge these fields. I can rename it to a year. And I have one data set that I can now analyze. So I'm starting off with the crime count, dragging in my year. As you can see now, I basically have one analysis done over these two files together. And this scales really well. Uh, now I've done just with two files, but you can even do a wildcard union that you're just going to look at all the files in one folder as well. So remember, we're adding data. We're not necessarily adding columns. All right, Ruben. Let's talk big, really big. Because what I've seen from you were just some tiny little data sets coming from different databases. But what will happen if you have really huge, big databases, and you want to combine these two together. OK, so, so you're going to think blending is really good for performance and you joining. You probably think I'm going to fail now because uh -huh. it's big data, right? Yeah. All right, so I prepared this, and I got a, a data set which was really, really big. So this is the GDELT project. For the people that are not familiar with this, it's got data over all the events in the world, how it's reported in the news, and how many um, they report against each other. 
This data is fairly big. I think it's currently got about 600 million rows. And the good thing is, it's freely published on Google BigQuery. So I can easily connect to it and query it and see what kind of fancy analysis I can do on top of that. So let me just use that and, and show you how that is done. Go ahead, uh, Ruben. So I've connected here to the BigQuery. And as you can see, as of today, it's got 602,914,000 rows, which is fairly big. I think you'll agree with me on that one. So this, we've prepared it a little bit, but I have event root code here. So I can easily split this out over different types of events. And this will just connect to BigQuery. So, and there it is. Well, there's 20 rows. And, and there's different events, and they all have the number now. So maybe I can drag in sentiment, get to know a little bit more about this. I'm just going to make sure I select the average. So turn this around, make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So I have my event root codes, 1 to 20. And didn't you have a file somewhere that had uh, like the names for these root codes? Yeah, because I really would like to know what is this 19. So I have a really nice Excel file with you. Okay. Just 20 rows of data, okay. nothing more. Should be fine. I'm not, in the, not scared of that. Um, this is a big query data set, but I can easily do a cross database join as well. So I'm going to go back to my data source, add this new connection. Make sure I select an Excel file. And here's my event root codes. So I added, it, it asked me how I want to connect to it. So to do that, I'm just going to make sure I select the event root codes, because that's what we're talking about today. So event root codes are not matched. It's apparently an inner join. I'm happy with that. I know the data on both sides anyway. And uh, well, let me go back to the sheet so I can actually add the name. I mean, uh, it should be fairly easy. It would be yeah. nice. It's uh, quite easy, this join. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, we had some connection issues uh, earlier this week as well, yeah. so maybe. What's this? Where are we waiting for? Maybe Wi Fi? <laughs> wi Fi. Could be. It's always the Wi Fi. <laughs> Should be there shortly. Yeah? Okay. I gave you some time, man. Eh? Right. You have plenty of time. <laughs> All right. Ah, the first rows are coming in. How many? Oh, two million. How many rows did we have, Ruben? Just 603 million. How many minutes do we have? 27 minutes and 19 seconds. All right. Are we going to wait for this? No. This takes way too much time. So let's blend. and remove the join. So, back to the sheet. And I'm gonna blend now. It was an Excel with the event root codes. This is it. Let's open it and wait for the names. Just, let's just drag the names on the rows and wait for it. Thank you, thank you. No minutes, no seconds, a split second. Okay, okay. Well, I think you won this one for sure, Hank. This is a I'm, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, please be aware of big data sets coming from different data sources. Not just one database, no. We want to combine a database with another data source. But, but, but Hank, before you're actually going to evangelize here the whole blending thing, and that's the, the solution for everything, let me try to explain to people why we just had that really long wait and why we were loading all of these millions of rows or just want to look at 20 records. So when we look at this, we did a cross database join. So we didn't look at one database. We're actually looking at sort of two databases with one represented by Excel. So because joining happens on the most granular level of, of rows, we could not really do that in one database because the data is not there. So what we had to do to get to that lower level of detail, we had to get all of the data from the database, which is the entire 603 million records, have to pull that into Tableau, combine it with the Excel, 
And then basically a little data explosion happens and only then the join happens. It can reduce to these 20 rows and then we can do our analysis in Tableau. This is very specific to a cross database, especially when joining, where with a blending things are a little bit easier because it first is going to aggregate the data. We're first going to do the query, do this big query, which is just 20 records, and then the data is combined in Tableau. So there's not much movement of data at all, which is, to be fair, it was a bit quicker. Not that yes, much. Yeah. definitely, I was the winner. But you look quite. <laughs> But you're looking really smart now, and I don't like that. Yes. So you don't like it. I okay, did a bit okay. of research, and we've actually built in a new feature to circumvent this. It is now actually possible to do a cross database join, but to actually leverage your database technology. So we're not depending anymore just doing the join into Tableau. So, sorry about that. If you do have these databases and these files, and the file you're going to join with is actually not that big, like in our example, um, you can actually choose to do the cross database join using your existing database. So if you're in version 2019.3 or later, you can find this when you meet these requirements. And how does that look like then? Well, we start off with the same blobs. But what Tableau is now going to do is it's going to load the data from a smaller data set, and it's actually going to move it over to a temporary table in your data warehouse. The join happens in the database, which is really quick, because the data is already there, and it's combined, and the database are really quick in joining. So it just happens like that. And then the data basically goes over in one go. And that's actually pretty fast as well. So keep an eye out, because blending is going to be less relevant very, very soon. And you know what? You, you threw me a bonus one with the big data, but I think I have one for you. So, Let's make things a little bit more complex and talk about complex modeling. So I want to have a look at this. So let's have a look at a little bit more, more data. And let's look at the crime type. So is it on personal things or is it on property things? Because I'm not really worried on things that happens to houses. I'm worried of things that happen to me. So I have these three data sets here. I think it's a nice challenge for you. OK. So you think I cannot manage multiple data sources. Well, just show me first. You, you, can have, you can have as much data sources as you want, man. No problem. Not at all. So, yes, we have uh, the, the crimes, in this case for the US, all the crimes. We have state names and we have crime types. Three data sources. No problem. We can link them on state codes and we can link them on crime. So let's blend. Right, so what do we have here? Just a clean sheet, and I'm gonna drag my files into Blow. Let's start with all the US crimes. So here we have all the crimes, and let's start with crime count per state code. So this is it. This is my primary data source, and now I would like to have my state names. So for this, I'm going to blend on state name. So we have state code, and we have state name. Just drag it, and I'm going to blend. So here we have the state codes, we have the state names, and I'm now able to blend. Column name is the same. Yeah, so this is what you see here. It's already linked, thanks to the linking icon. So let's put the state name onto the rows. And here I have my state names. I don't want to have the state codes anymore. So let's drag this out. And now I get a big message. And what does this mean? This means we can't link anymore. And the reason is, I removed the linking field. This is, however, not a problem at all, because it's this broken link icon. I just have to press on it, and that's it. And the link is fixed. So, next file, crime types. Let's blend this also. So here we have 
the crimes and the crime type, and I'm able now to put the crime type on color. So let's go back to the analysis, and I put the crime type on color. Sorry, of course, first link it. And I'm done, Ruben. Okay. It's great, man. But we, dis we discussed this earlier. You need to get population as well. So I would really love to get ratios in here. And I think there's another file that has it on state codes with the populations. Can you just, I mean, you said that combined with all the data. Can you use that as well? As many as, many as you want, Ruben. Sure. So not a problem at all. So here I have population. So let's plan this one also. So what do we have? We have state name and we have population. Perfect. Let's go back to the analysis. And what we have here, population and state name. I don't see a linking icon. No problem. Let's just go to the edit relationship dialog box. So here I can create my own link based on population, custom, at on the left, we have the primary data source, state code, <coughs> and on the right, we have state name. Okay, we have a problem. I can't link. You're stuck now, aren't you? <laughs> How are you gonna do this? I don't think I can manage this one. I can't link. So, all the data. <laughs> all the data. <laughs> all right, so, what is happening here? <coughs> that was almost like the big data explosion there. <laughs> this, this was, uh, your query is ready, man. <laughs> I know. It's so unsafe in the US. I want to go back to the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, this is what we want, the ratio. Per uh, state name, per crime type. So this is what we have, and this is the relationship. The problem is my population data source, the linking field is state name. And this is not in the primary data source. It's in the secondary data source. And I can't link on the secondary data source. So this is a problem. If only there was a way where you could just combine this data in these kind of models. How good would that be, right? Okay, oh, if Ruben, only a it's your moment could to be shine, the solution. Man. All right. So <clears throat> let me guys show you how you do this with joining. So I'm going to throw all this blending away because there's no value to us anyway. Um, so I have my US crimes, I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure I have all my connections in here. So one of them is an Excel file. Um, make sure I get that one in. Uh, the state names linked automatically, which is really good. And I think I have two other text files. So let me make sure I have the crime types and I have the population as well. As you saw here, because the names were exactly the same, the joining happened on the same uh, table fields, and I have my model here, which kind of looks familiar as probably the diagram you just saw as well. So everything's nicely linked up, and I have no concept of second or tertiary or primary. I can just link it however I want. And the proof is in the potting, so let me actually build that out for you right here. So we started off with state names, and we have uh, crime counts as well. So this is good. Um, I want to color it by crime type, and let me make sure I have the crime count, and well, I want to divide it by my population. And because it's already in my data set, super easy, job's done. Great job. That's how easy joining is, Hank. It went a bit Great. faster as well, I think. Sorry? It went a bit faster as well, so. Yeah. <clears throat> The trick is, when you're using compact models, with data blending, literally all secondaries always have to link to the primary. There is literally no other way. Um, so you're kind of stuck with that when you don't have a linking field towards your primary, but you want to link to your secondary. It's just not possible. 
But when you do a database join or a cross database join, literally any topology is allowed. So you can build it out like any of these examples you see right here. There's nothing stopping you at all. So I think that one's for me, Hank. Yes, you deserve this one. Absolutely. So. You really maybe need more. Your data is so complex. You have so many data sources. And you need so many data flows. And you have unclean data. For instance, just a simple example. Um, we have crime information from different data sources, Excel, CSV, and we want to union this data. This is not the same data source. You can't do this in Tableau Desktop. For union, you have to have the same data source. And um, I want to link with state names, but yeah, there, are some, there is some trouble with this file. It's unclean. So I need to clean it. And we have for this Tableau Prep Builder. And with Tableau Prep Builder, you can create really complex data flows, many steps, combining many data sources. So let's take just a quick look what prep can do for you. This is not a prep session, so I will go through it very quick. Uh, so yeah, just watch the, the recordings of TC if you have not been to a prep session uh, before. But let's just look to this example and how to combine this type of data in prep. And I'm really nervous that I'm going to press the wrong button again. Ooh. Great. So let's start with the old crime information. So this is it. This is my data. Looks good. And let's add another data source. with the newer crime information. So, okay, we see immediately our data, and I am able now to combine this data. So we have old crime information, new crime information, and I want to union this. Different data sources, just drag and drop, and Tableau Prep is able to combine this. So, we see here that uh, columns are combined based on name, but not every column. So I really would like to see the columns not matching. So like the demo in the, the demo of Ruben, we have different fields for year. Just drag and drop and the fields will be merged. So this is it. Um, here I have my first union. So let's take a closer look to it. This is my crime information. And let's join this with states. So here I have my state names. I'm going to drag this in. And here we have the state code and state name. Having the state information and I'm now able to join. This is automatically joined. On state code, I can of course change my join definition. And I can also define here my join type. In this example, we have an inner join, but you can play around with it as much as you want. So let's go back to the inner join. And what I see here, there are records excluded. You immediately see the result of your join. And this is very interesting. You are interacting with your data now. And I really would like to know what am I missing here? There are more than 200 records missing. So to see this, we have the mismatch check mark. And I can see immediately on the left side, records not matching, and on the right side. And for some reason, this, this code is repeated. And that's not right. So let's just rename this. Press Enter and I'm done. So what you see here, 
no excluded records anymore. Also, you can see immediately if you are uh, blowing up your data, if you are double counting your data. This is not happening here, so great. So let's take a look to our results. And what we see here, crimes per year, the state code and state name. This is the result from the join. And I see here in the top right corner a little light bulb. And this is a recommendation. Prep is, your, is having a uh, helping hand built in the software. So let's take a closer look. And my recommendation based on the content of the data is please change the data role into state. Okay, let's do this. And thanks to this data role, PREP will immediately say the record's not matching this data role. So what we see here, this is a typo. It's not right. I can, of course, rename it in the same way as I just did, but I see again this light bulb. There's new help on the way, so let's take a closer look. And this help, uh, this suggestion is, please group and replace this. All right, let's do this. And what's happening now, there is a automatic group and replace done based on spelling and pronunciation. So what you see here, it's automatically corrected in Alabama. Without having this data in the column, it's automatically corrected based on data type. This is one of the smart features of Tableau Prep. This is just a simple example, but you can create really complex data flows with Tableau Prep. So uh, I want, really would like to output this to the server. So I'm able here to output this to the Tableau server, publish this data source to the Tableau server, and with that, all the people in the company are able to analyze on top of this end result. So, with Tableau Prep Builder, you are able now to clean data very easy. You are able to do a cross-database union. You are able to do all kinds of joins and see the results immediately and fix it. And you can create very complex data flows. But there's even much more. You can aggregate your data, summarize it in the way you want. You can pivot your data, columns to rows, rows to columns. And with the newest version, you are also able to integrate R scripts, Python scripts. And this opens up a complete new world. And what is to come? A lot, for instance, right to database. Okay, back to this published data source, Ruben. So, and that's actually the good thing. <coughs> so what you saw, if you have it using prep, and what we also told you before when you're joining data, you can actually publish this data source to your data consumers. So what happens? You create something in Tableau Desktop or in Tableau Prep like you just saw. And you publish that data source to Tableau Server. Then other users could potentially use their own laptop to connect to this published data source that is published on the server. And very easily connect to that. And there's just basically, there's a single data source via data server. And there's also just one version of the truth, which is kind of what we all want through. So, the good thing is, when you're actually doing this, and a lot of time you do a join in prep, is that when you have this, and you have it actually in Excel, or your user has an Excel, they can actually blend that with a published data source. So, in the end, it all kind of comes together, Hank. Yeah, that's true. So, we, <laughs> it's beginning with you, and we end up with me. <laughs> so, let's wrap this up. Um, so we've looked at a lot of different things, and there's a lot of pros and cons with blending cross-database joins or using Tableau Prep. And basically, it all comes down to use the tool in your toolbox, whichever you want to use. Um, there is not really one which is really the best one. And, you know, I still have this one for you, Hank. Of course. <laughs> all right, yeah. With Tableau Prep, you even have more. You have even more tools and knives in your data kitchen. You can create very complex data fl uh, flows. Cleanse it, pivot it, union it, whatever you want. So, 
Ruben, it's up to you now to end right. the session. So thank you all for your attention and for being here, uh, especially not after a day to night out. And hopefully you feel now a little bit more comfortable by using blends, using joins, and basically to create your own data cocktail when you get home uh, this evening. So thank you very much for your attention, and we would really appreciate it if you could fill in the survey in a moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.